This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Is your biggest problem brokenness? This is Wretched Radio. It appears we've got ourselves a new gospel method. Nothing wrong with that. If somebody comes up with a clever way in our current context to rightly present the gospel, thumbs up. Wouldn't you agree? It's called the Three Circles Life Conversation. This is a three-circle drawing. You can't see it because this is radio. The idea is that God has a design for us, a set of rules. The fellow didn't quite talk like that. We break those rules, and because of that, we're outside of his plan for our lives, and we're really, really broken. What do we try to do? We fix it with more broken things, so we ourselves become more broken. And we sense that there needs to be a change, but we don't know what that change is. Therefore, we need something that the Bible calls the gospel to help us with our brokenness. Well, the Bible has a solution to this problem of brokenness, and it's called the gospel. Gospel is a Bible word. It simply means good news. And this is the good news, that God loves us. And he loves us so much that when he sees us in our brokenness, he doesn't just leave us there. That's true. But that's not why Jesus came to this world. That is an effect. Jesus came to die for sinners so that we don't have to die and face an eternity of God's wrath poured out upon us. In fact, 2,000 years ago, he sent his own son, Jesus, to come and live a perfect life. He lived on the earth, and he never departed from God's design. He never sinned even one single time. Don't mind telling you I do like that. Why? Because we get imputed with that. We get credited for that, too. We often miss that when we present the gospel. Yes, Jesus died for sinners. That's what he did passively on the cross. But up to that point, he actively fulfilled all righteousness. We get credit for that. That's a big part of the gospel, that we are not just seen as forgiven. We are seen as the righteousness of God because of the work of Jesus Christ. Now, does this particular presentation ever get to that descriptor of why Jesus lived a perfect life. Furthermore, try to be an etch-a-sketch. Be a blank slate. You don't know the gospel. You don't know anything about Christianity. God sent his son. What does that sound like to you? You'd go, well, God had a baby. It's biblical language. Of course it is. But we just need to remember people don't know nothing, honey. They just don't know anything about Jesus, the Bible, the Trinity, Son, so he had a baby, and there's the Holy Spirit. How does that even work? Whatever. We need to explain these things. If we don't, I think we cause more confusion than anything. He loved people. He cared about people. He stood up for people who couldn't stand up for themselves. He spoke up for people who couldn't speak up for themselves. But one day, when he was about 33 years old, people that he loved took him outside the city of Jerusalem, they put a crown of thorns on his head. They put nails in his hands and nails why? in his feet. Why? And they why? crucified him. Why, 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 why? It was a nice, he didn't do anything wrong and they killed him. Why? What was the, how's about it was God's prearranged plan? How's about that's the reason that the universe exists? The universe exists. Got to read this. No, hold on. Because, yeah. This is a good reminder of why the planet is even spinning. It's found rather concisely in Ephesians and chapter 2. It's actually multiple times in Ephesians, but nevertheless, let's do the quick one. In Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1, Rexella. And he made you alive who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Really broken. Feeling broken and broken, so just doing broken things. I'm sorry. It's not what the text says. You were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, filling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Here's good news. Your eternity hangs on this conjunction. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you are saved, raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, 
Here it comes. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ. There it is. That's the reason the universe exists. Because God put a couple of representatives on this planet. They sinned. We all fell. Why? So that he could send forth his son, the second person of the Trinity, to live a perfect life we could not and to die the gruesome death we don't want to so that we can be forgiven and so for all of eternity, Ephesians 2, 7. God can point to us as demonstrations of his mercy and kindness. That's the gospel. That's the reason. Without explaining that, a nice guy named Jesus got taken out and put a crown of thorns on his head and he was hung on a cross. Why? None of that has been explained yet in this Three Circles presentation. And while Jesus was hanging on the cross, God did a miracle. God took the sins of the world, my sins and your sins, and he put those sins on Jesus. Now we- that's right. So you've got to give credit where credit is due. But ask yourself, does any of that make sense? Have we really been talking about sins? No, we've been talking about brokenness. Jesus was on the cross. Jesus paid the penalty for all of our sins. What penalty? That hasn't been explained. Now, again, please note, I don't know this fellow. I'm not calling him a heretic. This is a public, he wants people to be using this. So we're working through it to see, as good Bereans, if we should. And to me, I'm sorry, this has been, this is just, I know it's clear in his mind. I get what he's saying all over the place. But to the unregenerate sinner, so far, overall, it sounds like I won't be so broken if I become a follower of Jesus. The Bible says after he'd done everything that he came to do, that he died, they took his... Now, what, 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 did, he, what did he come to do? We don't know. Down off of the cross, they laid him in a tomb, and three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. And this is the good news, because when Jesus rose from the dead, he proved he could do exactly what he said he could do. Make sure that we don't have to face the wrath of God, please. Give us of our sins. He proved that he was exactly who he said he was, the Son of God. Okay, he used the word sins. That's good. I'm sorry. I just don't think that this is making sense. We can't assume people get this, and I see this regularly. I see it in myself, the ability to just kind of bing, zing, shoot over here, there, and everywhere like Charlie Callis. And I don't think that that's actually coherent, frankly. And this is the good news. So the change that we really need, we've tried to change ourselves. It doesn't work. The change that we really need comes from Jesus. And so we want to change, and we're going to believe. I'm sorry. This is a dog's breakfast. We're going to believe that Jesus is our Savior, that Jesus came to rescue us from our brokenness. Okay, see, there it is, conflating sin and brokenness again. Amazing thing happens. When we make that step, and we come to that moment in our lives, and we turn from our sins, and we turn to Jesus God does a miracle in our hearts, and he gives us a new power. He gives us a new ability. He gives us something new inside of us that allows us to begin to recover and pursue God's design. Now, the Ordo Salutis quibble aside, what does this sound like to you? Does, does this sound like the forgiveness of sins gospel or believe in Jesus and you're going to start to heal That happens, but that's not the gospel. What's really awesome about that is no matter what we've done, no matter where we've been, no matter how many mistakes we've made, no matter how deep our brokenness is, that Jesus comes into our lives and he begins to help us pursue and recover God's design from right here, right now, right where we are. And then once we become a believer in Jesus, an amazing thing happens. We begin to receive the blessings of God We begin to experience the blessings of God, and then God sends us right back out into a broken world where our friends and our neighbors and our relatives and our coworkers, they need to hear the good news of Jesus, and we get to tell it. This is a conversation guide. We call it the three circles, and we do it because we believe that life on mission really matters. I I guess I agree with that rather trendy statement. But I think what matters even more is being accurate when we present the gospel. If you teach Sunday school, your kids don't make the same mistake. 
Don't make the same mistake. We've got to drub this over and over and over again because it is my experience, and I've got a fair amount of it in this regard, talking to university students. When you ask them, these kids who used to attend youth group and church, what is the gospel? Their answer is, the what? Seriously, that's what they say. The what? The gospel. Oh, like Matthew, Mark, and Paul, and Ringo? No. The gospel, the good news that Jesus died for sinners. That's the gospel. Use the law, then bring about the knowledge of sin. Explain the character and the nature of God, what we deserve, and what Jesus did for us so that we do not have to face the wrath that is to come. Please, please be mindful of this when you present the gospel. And as far as this three circles life conversation guide goes, I might suggest we tear it up and go back to the old conversation guide. This is Wretched Radio. Don't forget, if you would like to hear the entire daily broadcast, simply visit wretched.org, go to iTunes, figure out your favorite Android listening platform, and you can listen to the entire program every single day, download it to your listening device, for free. Well, thanks to our monthly supporters called the Gospel Partners. If you'd like to partner with us, we'd be very, very grateful. Simply visit wretched.org.